Good morning. This is Mark Allness. Uh, I'm in Seattle, Washington. It's April 14th, 2007. I'm pleased to be a part of your pre-conference institute there in May. Wish it could be there in person, but this is almost as good and it's a lot of fun as I think about putting together what you're about to see for the next half hour. I get awfully excited uh, because I get to talk about and show you things um, that are just amazing to me. I've been doing technology related things in my third grade classroom for a dozen years or so. But what's happened over the last two years has just astounded me. It's revolutionized how I teach. It's changed what I teach with my third graders. Um, so over the course of the next half hour I hope to show you a little bit of what that world is like what the world of my kids is like, what they produce, how I teach it, what my classroom looks like, some of the challenges, some of the accomplishments, definitely, for sure. They're just amazing things I have never seen uh, in my over 25 years of teaching a more powerful tool for motivating kids to write than the blog. It's as simple as that. And when you have a powerful tool at your disposal, well, a smart teacher will use those tools and um, additionally they're the tools of today and I believe if we don't use the tools of today uh, as teachers we're negligent we're not doing our job because we're not preparing our kids for the future that's changing constantly the, you know the future is here as we speak is changing so I'm going to just say thanks again for having me. I hope you enjoy the next few minutes. And hopefully, if the technology continues to work, uh, we can have a chance to connect and have a live uh, conversation or chat at the end of it all. Talk to you later. Here we are in my classroom at uh, Arbor Heights Elementary School, my third grade classroom. Uh, you're looking at my teacher desk, uh, <laughs> piled high. I think this should be a, some sort of contest with teachers uh, everywhere about who has the highest piles on your desk. Anyway, I'm going to give you a slow pan around my classroom. It's before school. It's a Tuesday morning as it turns out. You see we have a chalkboard. Uh, several computers, of course. A TV that's hooked up to one of those computers. And as we pan around to the other side of the room here, you're going to see, besides a wall of snowflakes, which I really need to get to and get down, because it's after Earth Day, for goodness sakes, a lot of computers over there. We do have an Earth left over from Earth Day. Earth Day's every day, of course and we're still working on the project. I'm going to um, scroll back to the center of the room and uh, step out into the picture here. Um, I mentioned the chalkboard. I like to think of uh, this group of kids and myself as kind of a, a tweener group, uh, meaning we're, we're in between technologies. This, 19th, 20th century technology and what I'm rolling out here, 21st century technology um, with a multimedia computer, a projector, a DVD player, a big sound system on the bottom, and radio, the whole, the whole works. Um, I teach from this. A lot of times the screen covers the chalkboard and uh, I pull up my stool. Now, I'm holding in my hand. I'm probably in violation of several federal laws by mentioning that these are our high stakes uh, achievement tests, the WASL. <laughs> We're right in the middle of taking the WASL here in Washington State, or at least in Seattle, day two. Uh, so that will take a big chunk of our time. But anyway, um, 
this is where I also do a lot of teaching. And kids come up here and uh, show their work, talk about things. Um, and then, of course, the rest of the computers that you see are used frequently throughout the day. Um, as I look around, I think, oh my goodness, I should have cleaned up. <laughs> but, you know, for a realistic view, of a classroom in kind of anywhere USA. This might be one. Well, here's where it all happens. This is the Mighty Writers blog. It's room12.com. You have to spell out the 12. Um, and that's just a domain name that I bought. But this is where it happens. On the left side over here under the Junior Seahawk are blogs that I've singled out that my kids read, that they comment to, that they receive comments from, and so on. In the center of the screen is my article, or is my blog. The articles that I write appear right here. And scrolling down a, a little bit on the right side, you see these are my students. And clicking on one of their names will give us their blog. We'll go right to their blog. Going down a little farther on the page, on the left side, back across, you now see the latest blog entries from any of my students. They're listed in chronological order, the most recent at the top. Uh, some of my kids have been blogging since spring vacation. They write from home. <laughs> and I approve their articles or give them feedback from my home. So it's uh, really changing the boundaries of the classroom. Um, I think I'll just click on a blog here just to give you an idea of what it's like. I'll try Chelsea over here. This is Chelsea's world. Chelsea has a fancy, uh, well, sort of blue and purple uh, thing going on. Spring, spring break plans, which she wrote about, and that's what I had all my kids write about um, during the week before spring break. Going to go back at this point and just note that. There are some alumni. These kids are now fourth graders. I invited them to come back and with their parents' permission, of course, and join on. And so their writing, uh, even though they're not in my class anymore, is still approved by me. So I'm their sort of teacher emeritus or whatever. Um, <laughs> down here we have our map uh, cluster uh, map that tells us where visitors have where visitors are from that have been to visit our blog and uh, highly concentrated in North America but a lot of visitors also from Europe and then it's always interesting to notice the scattered you know two in Brazil and one in Africa and actually a lot of blogging activity takes place in New Zealand and Australia as well. We've had a fair amount of contact with some of the kids there. I'm going to return to room12.com and just wrap this portion up by saying that this tool comes from David Warlick. This is Class Blogmeister. Uh, without this tool, without the safeguards that this tool provides, I would not be blogging with my students. I'll include more on that later. So here we are at the uh, home of one of my students. Um, we won't use your name because of the uh, confidentiality but uh, how about Billy okay does that work for you yeah and we're here at Billy's house with his uh, parents here hi dad hi 
All right, uh, we have to make sure that this is all okay with the parents, of course. And so, uh, what are you doing at your computer right now? I'm typing a story on my blog. You're typing a story on your blog. Now, are you are you typing it directly on your blog, or...? Yeah, I'm typing it directly on my blog. Okay, because in our classroom, we do a lot of writing in Word first. Do you ever do that here? Yeah. You do it here? Sometimes. Sometimes. Let's see, uh... You're pulling up one that you already wrote? Uh-uh. I'm, I'm, I'm going to just type it in here instead. Oh, you're going to type it in Word just instead? Okay. All right. So go ahead and type. I'm going to ask you questions. We'll see how many things you can do at once. <laughs> I bet you could do a lot. So uh, how, how often do you go on your blog? Um, two times a week, maybe. Two times a week, maybe. Okay. Because I notice you, you write a lot of articles. Mm -hmm. And... Um, this is this is in your bedroom actually at home, right? Yeah. So the family has other computers in the house too, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. What's the most fun part about writing on your blog? The other people around the world get to see your writing. They uh -huh. get to see how interesting it is. Uh huh. Have you gotten any cool comments from anybody recently? Not really. Okay. Okay. Have you left any comments for anybody recently? Yeah, I left one for in New York. Uh, somebody in Mr. Bruns class? Yeah. One of those fifth graders. Okay. All right. Great. I'm in my backyard uh, right now. As it happens, it's uh, Earth Day, April 22nd. It's April 22nd every year. And uh, I thought I'd be remiss in not mentioning Earth Day in the course of this presentation because it's had a lot to do with uh, my being here and speaking with you. Uh, I run the Earth Day Groceries Project, which is a very large, if not the largest, educational activity on the internet and um, Don Liu wrote about it way back when he wrote the Miss Rumpius Effect and in large part that is why this group is together at the IRA convention in Toronto right now uh, having to do with that so my roots go back to that and I wanted to just take a minute I don't know where this will fit into the presentation yet as I knit all these pieces together uh, I wanted to talk for a minute just about where teachers are and where they have come. Part of what I do with the Earth Day Groceries Project is receive reports from people who have done the project, decorating grocery bags for Earth Day and uh, having them distributed uh, at grocery stores, spreading an environmental message as kids decorate uh, the bags with beautiful artwork and so on. Um, so I get reports on the project website at earthdaybags.org and they also send pictures, teachers also send pictures and so this is the 14th year that the project's been on the internet and the 13th year that I've been receiving pictures so I thought I'd talk well for a minute about teachers and how they're using technology and how I've seen it change over the course of the last 13, 14 years. Some people complain who are pushing the envelope on technology right now, and I'll count myself in that as a sometimes complainer, and I get frustrated, that, that teachers are just not moving fast enough. You know, there's so much... The world is changing, and we're just stuck in the world of chalkboards and overhead projectors. And... Yeah, I still have a chalkboard in my room. But over the course of these 13, 14 years, when I see pictures being sent in to me to the project website, I get about 500 pictures sent in every year. To, And so I build, oh, usually over 100 web pages for each school that sends them in with three or four pictures, well, usually three pictures on each page. And it's been interesting to see what sorts of file formats I get over the course of the project. And as teacher sophistication changes, 
uh, I, I'm really in a unique position, I think, to see how that's changed. Um, and it has changed, and it's positive, and teachers are getting it. It's just so darn slow sometimes. Uh, so I have to remind myself when I get frustrated that things aren't moving fast enough that they are moving for teachers. And it's a process, and we'll get there. Happy Earth Day. Okay, this is Mr. Almas again. I'm at the home of one of my students, one of my third graders. Let's see. Oh, maybe Tommy? Shall we go with Tommy? Is that okay? Okay. Okay, we can't use, of course, this student's real name for confidentiality reasons. But anyway, thank you, Tommy, <laughs> for inviting me into your home and uh, letting us take a look at you on your blog on the Internet. And, of course, we have parents' permission. Mom's right here. Hi, Mom. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, are you on your blog right now? Yeah. How often do you go on your blog? Mm, sometimes. Like, do you go like every day? No. No? Um, do you go like maybe once a week or more than that? Um, sometimes I don't go on. Okay. Alright, so have you written any articles recently? Yes. Um, hi. Okay. Did you get any good comments recently from anybody? I see you're looking up your looking at your blog right now. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah, it's kind of cool how you can see the list of them over there, isn't it? All right. Now, when do you sometimes write articles and send them in from home here? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, where are we right now? We're, we're at your house, we're in your bedroom, right? Yeah. And this is your own computer, right? Mm -hmm. So you must have, do you have the only computer in the house? No. No, there's other computers here, right? Okay. I'll have coffee in the normal. Okay. Wow. <laughs> All right. Great. So, let's see. Go ahead and log in if you want. Okay. okay? Ah, this is, um, <laughs> you see. Oh, that's better. Is this computer a lot different from the computer that you have in, in our yeah. classroom? Every time I click, it highlights the words and it opens new pages. See? Oh, okay. This is a new page. Oh, I see. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, maybe you had a little login error there, huh? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Let me go back. Thank you getting in. Good. What's the coolest thing about doing a blog? Oh my god. Uh, I don't know why it's doing capital. Well, look up there. Does it say log out and edit in the top left no. corner? No. Okay. Well, what's the coolest thing about your blog anyway, Tommy? Uh, it's blue. <laughs> <laughs> Is this something you like to do on your own at home? Oh, found it. Oh, there you go. Well, that was different, wasn't it? Never mind. Well, I'll look for login and edit. I bet you're there. Upper left-hand corner. Does it say edit? Nope. Login. Okay. You're doing really good. Hanging in there. I does this ha does this happen a lot? No. Oh, only this is now. The first time. Oh, this is the first time. Oh, great! Just because just because Mr. Ollis is in your house, I'm bringing you good luck. Oh no! Oh no! Your blog is having uh, is freezing up. Well, listen, Tommy. I want to thank you for letting us come into your uh, house and take a look at you trying to get on your blog. Okay.
Maybe this computer is having a problem because it never does that. It never does that. All right. Well, thank you anyway. You and take care. This isn't care. working either. Oh, my goodness. You have a great weekend. We'll see you back at school. Okay. <laughs>
at my laptop looking at part of my work that's not done for the day. I have uh, several student blog articles to review. I'm sure there are some of my kids who are already at home saying, why isn't my blog article up, Mr. Allness? Um, so, <laughs> what these new technologies have changed is uh, definitely the walls uh, that we teach in and that kids learn in um, are different. They work from home. I work from home. I work here, which isn't that unusual to be at a teacher's desk, but also the time has changed because it's 24-7, or it can be 24-7 if we let it, if we want it. Um, so I think it's only appropriate that I try to um, multitask while I make this recording, since I asked some of my students I went to their houses to do the same thing, so let's see how I do as well. I'm looking at a blog article of one of my students um, submitted, and um, I asked my kids to write each day about this uh, on the computer and save it in a document, and then we'd post it. And they wrote each day after taking the test and saved it, and then being Friday, they, they uploaded it to their blog. And uh, so now I'm looking at these Word doc, well, not Word documents, uh, submitted documents on, on their blog articles, we call them, and um, deciding if it's good enough for the rest of the world. I mean, I've told the kids the writing needs to be perfect. You know, each teacher needs to decide what the bar, how high the bar is going to be, um, their writing standard. Mine is uh, the King's English, well, not ex I shouldn't probably say that anymore these days, but perfect writing, spelling, punctuation, capitalization, and so on. These are eight and nine-year-olds, and uh, sometimes that's asking a lot. So I'm looking at a five-paragraph piece of writing from one of my students. I'm scanning it quickly. A lot of thought went into this writing. It's, it's, it's amazing. You know, I think about would I have assigned this sort of work um, before a blog was available for my kids? Absolutely not. No way. Um, so I, the medium has presented new types of writing, new forms for us to consider, I think. And they're the forms that the rest of the world is using. They're the forms that my third graders are going to be expected to know real soon, be expected to be fluent in. So it's fun. Um, and you know what? I'm going to put this blog article off to later because it needs a little bit of work. There are some that I look at and I go, that's good, or that just needs a period. And like I said before, each teacher needs to decide and and set it up with their students and make it clear what's acceptable, what's not, what's expected. Uh, I'll take a look at one more here. And um, well, the student forgot to put the title in the right spot now, and I can see right away a couple of misspellings. Now I have the opportunity here to leave feedback for the kids and have them fix their work on their own. And I've told them if there are two more than two or three misspellings, well, look for a comment from me next time you log in and don't find your blog article approved. I gotta put that one off as well. Well, that's two for two, not uh, not making it to the blog. I'll just take one more. We'll just see. I'm looking at 15 submitted articles just just to get an idea of it. Oh man, somebody sent, resubmitted something called the day before Easter. Oh, they must have done a little bit of work on that in the meantime. As I think about, it's uh, 4.30 on a Friday. School was out uh, almost an hour and a half ago. Um, I think about kids at home. I think about kids wondering When's my article going to appear? 
and uh, it, it just blows me away, it really does.